Let's look at the difference between boiling and evaporation. So let's consider at the macroscopic or everyday level first of all and the big thing you notice about boiling is that you get rigorous bubbling. That's what characterizes boiling and it occurs throughout the liquid and it also occurs at a specific temperature called the boiling point which would be 100 degrees Celsius for water. And let's compare that to evaporation. Well, first of all, evaporation is a much slower process. It takes a long time for the level of the liquid to uh, go down in evaporation, whereas it goes down quite quickly when a liquid is boiling. Uh, secondly, it occurs at any temperature. There's no specific temperature at which it occurs. And thirdly, it must occur at the surface. And the reason we know that is that if we have two containers and one of them is quite an open container like that versus say a fairly closed container like a pop bottle, we would have faster evaporation when we have more surface. So faster evaporation when you've got more surface area. Now we'd like to compare on the microscopic level the difference between evaporation and boiling. And I'd first just like to remind you that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy per molecule. So for boiling what's happening is that the average kinetic energy per molecule is enough to overcome the liquid bonds. And so suddenly at a given temperature the average kinetic energy is big enough to overcome the liquid bonds and boiling begins. That's quite a different process from evaporation where the molecules close to the surface with the highest kinetic energy have enough energy to overcome liquid bonds at the surface. If we consider the molecules close to the surface, some of them have lots of kinetic energy, some of them not so much. The ones with the most kinetic energy, they're going to have enough kinetic energy to overcome the liquid bonds at the surface and they'll escape the surface of the liquid and evaporate leaving behind, of course, the cooler molecules. So that's why we feel cool when we come out of the water at the beach. The fastest molecules leave the liquid on your skin. And that means what's left behind in the liquid that's on your skin is the slower moving molecules. we're losing the high kinetic energy molecules we're leaving behind the slower kinetic energy molecules and so of course that leads to a cooling of the liquid on your skin and you feel cool when you come out of the water at the beach so in either case we have a lot of heat energy it's going to be absorbed when liquid bonds are broken so this is a fairly big number that's the latent heat of water, 540 calories per gram. So we've got to add, that energy's got to come from somewhere. We're going to absorb, when, either when we're evaporating or boiling, we've got to absorb 540 calories per gram to go from the liquid state to the gas state. And if we go in this direction, we're going to have to absorb energy, and the liquid left behind will feel cool, if we go in the opposite direction, which is really condensation, then of course there's going to be energy released. There'll be a lot of energy released when, say, steam condenses on a surface. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.